Have you ever wondered what the best tips are for sewing? And maybe you're thinking like reading a pattern, do I need to do this? Should I do this? What's the best way to do this? Well, today I'm sharing my five best tips that I learned from my grandma. And grandma is here to join us. And I'm Hi. super excited about that. And of the five tips, four of them, I pretty much do all the time. And one of them, not so much. I'm trying to get better at it. And thankfully I've got grandma here to help me out with that one today. So let's get started. All right. So the number one tip or tip number one is to baste. And basting is one of those things that you're probably not doing enough of because you think you can get by without it. And grandma loves basting, right grandma? Absolutely. And why do you think we absolutely have to baste everything. You absolutely have to baste everything because of the fabric, for one thing. If it slips and slides, you really need to keep the, the most important thing is to keep these seams together and straight. For instance, on a straight skirt, you've got to have that very straight. It's true, seam. you do. And so you baste it. You baste it with a needle, and thread. You do not baste on a machine. You baste and then it's so easy. You can change it or you can go up or down or you can get the feel of the fabric and you get the feel of the garment you're making, the style and especially on an intricate pattern. I mean some of these Vogue patterns are really complicated <laughs> and if you baste you will be so happy. So another thing good for basting is holding in a lining, right? So when we made the oh, sleeves yes. um, for my jacket and it was a lined jacket, we basted, or actually grandma hand basted the lining to the sleeve before I started putting in the sleeve to just make sure nothing moved, right? That's right, so it didn't slide. And that was some slick lining fabric with a cotton outside fabric and there, were, there was a lot of movement there, wasn't there, Grandma? Yes, a lot of movement. <laughs> but the point is, it's just to give you, well, I was taught that you based everything and so I tried to pass that on to you. Yeah, I think you did. I think you, you did. The operative word, tried. <laughs> I think she did. I based a lot more now than when I started sewing back in college. Now, another good reason to baste is to like hold gathers in place. So once you get the gathers in, you're gonna baste them together so that when you go back in and do your final stitching, they don't move while you're sewing. That's another good reason, right? Um, uh, one thing I've found using basting is when I have attached a waistband to a skirt and I'm gonna go back in and stitch in the ditch from the right side, that if you baste the longer side of the back of the waistband that's on the inside next to your body, that helps hold it in place too. I mean, and that makes life so much easier to not have to worry about, did I catch the waistband on the underside? And another thing, if you're basting the hem on a pair of slacks, or be, you might measure, but be sure you put the two together to be very sure one's not this much shorter or longer than the other. Because From the front to the back. It's so easy. You've measured with the tape measure. Maybe the fabric stretched a little bit. Maybe you pull the tape a little tighter. Who knows? But it's so depressing to have hemmed a pair of trousers and find that they're not exactly even. That's true, that's true. Oh, and then another thing for basting is to keep pe pleats in place while you're- Oh, working. yes. Yeah, so you pleat the, you, eh, excuse me, you baste the pleats in place, so then as you're working with the garment, the pleats don't flop open and move around, right? That's right, and the, and the pleats won't twist on you. So you have nice, flat, straight pleats. You have nice, flat, straight seams on the, on the pleat if you baste. So. That is the first tip we have for you today. And grandma is adamant that the best way to baste is by hand and don't think you can get it done with your sewing machine. Cause you can also make bigger stitches with by hand, right? Yes, and you have to rip out a basting on the machine. That's true. And all you do on this is clip, and clip the, the knot, take a, a 
pair of tweezers or something and pull on the thread and the whole thing comes out. Because you're only basting with one thread when you're hand basting, as opposed to the machine basting, which has the top and the bottom thread, so you're doing double basting, means double the work when you have to go back and rip it out. Yeah, you can baste so easily. I really, really cannot understand <laughs> the, the people who, who just absolutely why should I based all of this? Well, because they don't know, Grandma, and that's why we're making this video today to share these tips. So I'm adamant about it, okay? <laughs> okay. Tip number two is use a double row of stitches to gather. And this is one of those things that the pattern instructions kind of leave out, and they just say, you know, make a row of basting stitches and gather. And the thing about it, why, why do we need two rows, Grandma? Because this is one of the ones that Grandma taught me, like, from the very beginning. Well, for one thing, you get a much, much more uh, professional and, and uh, row of stitching of your gathers. And if you break one thread, you don't have to go back and do the whole thing. You do have a second thread to be able to, to, gather. to, to finish it. However, if you have a good piece of parkal or a good piece of cotton that we used to use back in the 50s. Well, sometimes I would put three rows because you have a much better chance of breaking a thread on a heavier fabric than on a thinner fabric. Right. So if you're sewing, say for instance, if you're sewing on denim, and you don't usually gather denim, but I just use that as an example. The thing to do is to put three, and then you work from the middle one, and then you pull the other two on the side. No, oh, that's a good tip. Yes, and you go through the middle, and then you finish in with the two end pieces. And that, and if you are using two threads, pull the bottom one to give you your guide, and then work in with the top one. So we want to slide the fabric along the bobbin thread, right? So you want the, the exactly. top thread on top and the bobbin thread on the bottom, and then when you gather it, you're sliding you're, it along that one, exactly. right? Exactly. Your bobbin thread is your guide. Okay. So that's where we slide. Yes. And especially if you're making, and gathered skirts are coming back they in. They are coming back in. And everything seems to be coming back in. It's all, it all makes a big circle, so, Grandma. So anyway, <laughs> these are... These are two things that I've sewn with all my life, and I could not even imagine not doing it if I'm sewing. Right, and it really does make a huge difference to use that double row of stitches when you're gathering, especially if you're making like a full skirt, or if you're gathering a ruffle onto oh, a skirt, yeah. or sleeves. I think the instructions, though, say to do two you're rows of stitches. And there's some new styles of gathering around the a neck. A neckline, you have to do two yeah. rows of stitches. It just makes your life so much easier. So that's one of those things that Grandma taught me early on that I actually have followed because you can't do it without it. No, and then a ruffle, by all means, if you're doing a ruffle skirt, mm -hmm. which again, is coming back it's in. It's coming back. So the flounces, and you can call them a ruffle or a flounce or whatever, but I would suggest two to three uh, rows. rows of stitching. On the long stitch, do not think you're gonna pull a thread if it's on your regular stitching. You get as long a stitch as you can get on your machine. Right. Then you pull the threads. So just to reiterate, you're using your machine basting when you're putting in the double stitch rows for gathering because you you need that uniformity to do that. So doing a hand based for this doesn't work as well, no. right? Because you need that bobbin thread to be able to slide the fabric on to create the gathers. And it needs to be tight to kind of hold it together. Once you get those gathers done, then you can go back in by hand. Exactly. And, and put in a basing stitch to hold them in place exactly. before you either attach them to, you know, a waistband or a yoke or anything exactly. like that. Exactly. You after the, the flounce or the ruffle or whatever is uh, all the way, the right length and everything. Then you use the, the thread and needle to attach it to As where a hand it's going basting. to be. Exactly. Okay. All right. So that's tip number two. Use a double row of stitches. It's going to make your gathering so much easier. Sometimes three. Sometimes three.
<laughs> Tip number three, which I learned from grandma, is it's okay to not follow the pattern instructions. Now, sometimes when you're sewing, you'll just be in the zone and looking at the directions and being like, okay, this is how I have to put it together. And it's really not until you've been sewing a while that you're kind of like, you can read a pattern and go, mm, that seems like that's a lot more complicated than it needs to be. And there is a better way to do it. And if you've got that fear of, oh, is it okay if I don't follow the pattern instructions? Yes, it is. And I learned that from grandma. And when I learned that was when I was making this McCall's costume and um, for a play, it's basically this one down here and um, but with with these sleeves, but it was all solid one color and I was making a Maleficent costume for a play that I was in. This is what it looks like. So you've got a good visual on it. And when I was putting this together, of course, I enlisted grandma to help, right? You remember that costume? Usually we make costumes together. We usually for you. make costumes for me together, or grandma just makes them entirely because I'm usually costuming other um, people in the play. And so grandma makes my costume and then I costume other people. So, but in this instance, I was not doing a lot of costuming and I had grandma help me. The fabric was a purple taffeta and moray taffeta. So the bells of the sleeves were moray taffeta. And then the rest of the dress was just taffeta. We just made it all in one solid color. And the thing I remember about this pattern is that the instructions had me gathering the skirt onto the bodice. And this is a huge skirt. It's so full that I actually had to wear a petticoat underneath it in order to walk because it was just so much fabric and I needed something to hold it all out. And I was sitting there with grandma going, grandma, how are we ever going to gather this onto this bodice? And you remember what she said? I don't remember. <laughs> Grandma said, we're not going to follow the pattern instructions. This is stupid. We're going to gather it. And thankfully, you know, grandma was there to get all the gathers perfect. And then you hand basted the skirt and the top together. So we put the bodice over the gathers and then grandma basted it in place. And then I top stitched the whole thing on. Yes. We just, remember that? We just turned the seam allowance of the bodice. Under. Under. And then we basted it to the full, full skirt. We basted it very carefully, right. maybe twice. I don't and know. then it was so heavy. So then Tony just laid Top it stitched there it. and carefully stitched it. Along. And it was perfect. Yes, it was perfect. But one thing I thought of is, actually, I didn't think of this. When I was showing Grandma the pattern and we were reminiscing about this project, Grandma remembered another part of the pattern instructions that I'd totally forgotten about. And what was that? Yes. These sleeves, these huge were, sleeves, were just gorgeous. They wanted us to put the sleeves to finish the bodies with these all this fabric, these sleeves, and then no, no, we were gonna. You, they wanted you to attach yes. the bodice to the skirt, then put the then, sleeves then in. Then put the sleeves in. I thought we can't do that with all this fabric. So we finished the bodies with the sleeves. Everything finished. Then we put the, the bodice onto this full gathered skirt by just sewing on top. And it was perfect. It was the thread matched and anyway, it looked like that was the way it's supposed to be. Instead of turning this, I still don't know how you would have gotten that onto that point. I still don't know how you would have done that either. And I don't know how you would have put in those sleeves with this giant skirt attached to the bodice and trying to get that all in together yeah, because it, it, was, it was crazy. It was totally impossible. So when we finished the bodice, we had it all done. And then we put the skirt on it and it was a gorgeous costume. It is she gorgeous. Beautiful. She made her her headpiece. Yeah. And it was it was really she had a beautiful costume. So that's a perfect example of when you do not need to follow the pattern instructions, when it's going to cause a lot more work and effort. There's a greater potential to mess something up. And if it just doesn't make sense with the amount of fabric that you're using, and I, I don't remember how many yards this thing had, but it was a lot of fabric. It was, let's see, B. 
Yeah, it was like almost 10 yards of fabric. I mean, it was crazy. It was a massive amount of fabric for this costume. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. <laughs> but the thing is, is that also because it's a costume, I've worn it once. Well, I mean, I wore it for the five shows that we had it, but I mean, it's not like I keep wearing it. And the thing is, is that like, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's up on a stage. And so nobody's gonna look at the finer points, but the top stitching worked much better than trying to gather and putting the sleeves into the bodice before attaching it to the skirt was the much better option because it was so much easier. Well, well Tony, if you were going to wear this dress as a dress, the, the tops, the way it, we put this together was perfect anyway. Yeah, it still looked beautiful. It still looked very professional. I mean, it looked like the, it, that's the way it should have been made. Right, exactly. So sometimes you're going to realize that pattern instructions could be better or they could be a little bit easier. And it's up to you to, to just take that leap of faith and, and have faith in your own ability to be able to make a change that's going to be easier for you to sew and still get the end professional result that you want. Right, Grandma? Tip number four is always press as you sew. And this is one of those things I definitely learned early on from Grandma. I remember we were making, do you remember that horrible chambray shirt I made with that white collar and the collar kept, I bought some really cheap fabric at Walmart for one of my sewing projects in my intro sewing class. And as grandma was helping me put the collar on, like it just kept unraveling and like the collar just shredded basically. But I remember as we were making, <laughs> grandma would hand me things and be like, go press this, go press this, go press this. And I'm like, why am I doing all this pressing? And grandma's like, what did you tell me? I told you to, so we can see where we are, what we're doing. And so it looks professional yes, yes. and not homemade. Now, granted, this shirt still looked homemade. There was no it saving it. Yeah. But with the other projects I've done. Yeah, you, it's just the arm goes with the sewing machine. There were a couple. <laughs> <laughs> they are. And so um, it keeps the seam straight. Well, it, it, yes. And you you press the seams, and then you see what what you have. I mean, uh, it's and then of course that's how you get the professional look. Right. If you if press you as you go. Yeah. If you don't press, you you really have a homemade look. It just it's just the way it works. There's no real. You just have to do it. I I, I can't even imagine years years ago when uh, my godmother used to sew for me. And they didn't even have uh, electric irons. She would keep her charcoal there with the with the burner and the, the black iron there. And then they would, my grandmother, they would press as they sewed when it was terribly inconvenient. But yet they always had beautiful clothes. They, they homemade, but they looked very good. Because I, I, if you press as you're sewing, then you know all your seams are flat. Um, you're, you're going along and pressing as you're putting everything together. The seams are all pressed open. You also can decide what seam finishes you want to do and take care of them immediately. Yes. And it's just going to keep everything nice and neat and as you go through the process. Because you can't ever get that look at the end. If you don't press until the very end when everything's finished, it's never going to look right. You can't get, the main thing is, once you finish it, you can't always get to the seams to seam them. That's true. You can't you can't reach the seam that you really need to press. So, so you press before yep. you put it together. And if you do it as you go along, yes. um, you know, it looks a lot better. And we don't have any excuses today because we all have fancy electric irons. You don't have to sit by a fire or wait for the iron to get hot and then add some coals to it if it's going way back to our our sewing of yesteryears and you know it's it's so much easier now right yeah, yeah. i mean you know i'm a few years older than you <laughs> just a few grandma <laughs> so and anybody looking but nevertheless it is the proper way to do, to if you really want something to look nice that's the proper way to do it that's, and it's it's that's the way, just the bottom line and it's the way to keep it from looking homemade yes so you have more of a professional look it's pressed as you go and that's one of the ones that i always follow you see it's very difficult to press this open and see it lying flat when you have this and this attached so therefore you press this so when this and this is attached this is great 
So shoulder seams are a perfect example of things you want to press before you attach a sleeve and a neckline or neckband. Because that's just a very simple thing. And it's it's almost impossible to do. You can't ever get that seam flat. You can't flat. get that seam pressed if you don't press it before. And so that's that's tip number four that I always follow. I always have my sewing my ironing board up in my sewing room. The iron is usually ready to go. And I've just kind of gotten into the habit of doing that. I'll, I'll sew my side seams, I'll go press them. I'll sew my shoulder seams, I'll go press them. I'll put in the sleeve or sew the sleeve together, press that underarm seam of the sleeve, then put it in, then press again, make sure I get a nice crisp edge on the top of the sleeve. And it just makes everything so much yes, better. Yes, and just for instance, just recently, the sleeve was the most important part of a, of a dress. Right. You put the sleeve in and if you haven't, uh, press this seam and it's all gathered then this you're never going to get it right you'll never get it straight yeah that's I true. Mean, it's just so simple and it i can't even imagine as i'm repeating myself <laughs> sewing without that. example so the last tip from grandma is to fit as you sew and make your adjustments as needed as you go along and this is something that i'm not great at doing um, I used to be a little bit better at this when I worked in a sewing lab in college and I had friends and we could put things on each other and check and see how they looked. I do have a dress form, so I do use that, but she's a little bit smaller than I am. I need to lose a little bit of weight to be back to those measurements, but I do have grandma here to help me. So I was working on a top, which, you know, you can go back and watch in my uh, making a mock-up video. And once I actually made it in the real fabric, it doesn't fit quite as well as it did in the muslin. And so grandma is gonna help me fit that and I'm gonna go put it on and we're gonna be right back. So this is the Kiyomi top from the Everyday Style book. And I had the side seam sewn. I put in the bias binding around the neckline, which is gathered here. And I don't know if when I, I know when I made the muslin, the gathers kind of pulled out as I put it on and took it off. So when I made it up and I gathered it the right amount and, you know, based it in those gathers, attached the bias binding, it was too weird in the, sh in the armholes. So they were too big and they, they kind of came up to here and then they kind of puckered. It's not that, I don't know. Do I have square shoulders, grandma? Oh. What do you think? Do I have square shoulders? Why did the top look weird? It was just the pattern. The pattern just looked weird on me. And so grandma, helped me um, trim out this armhole seam to make it more summery and more open. But now we've got to pin it on the sides so that everything okay. works. Let's just do the other side part way too. Okay. So grandma's helping me pin. And this is one of those instances where fitting as you go really helps. And Okay. Go ahead. Don't do it this way then. We're so good. I can see. Okay. So basically the do you need me to turn no no that's okay. okay you so we're doing this live because you know this is one of the things you need to do and i'm not great at doing this by myself thankfully i have grandma to call and more than once you've come over to help me fit stuff grandma right yes the trouble is the pattern this to me let's put it this way I just thought the pattern was not bare enough grandma, for the shoulders. Grandma's the advocating arms. shoulders out for the summer. Because right, Grandma? I, if this was all the way here. Yeah. Now when she takes it in with her bias, it's going to give her a summer look. So it's going to be more summery. You see, it'll um, be more it's going to be showing a we've, little bit more shoulder. We've cut off about a half an inch here. Yeah. And now it's going to be, a, a, it's going to look real summery. Yeah. It's going to be I just cool. cut, but we had to, we had to trim a good half, well, inch. A half inch off. And, but now it's going it's to give fit. her that nice summer look. Yeah. See, and it's, and the back fits perfectly. Yeah. The back fits good. Yeah. So, and by the time she puts this, she, she's still going to cut about this much off the back. Okay. But just, but just look at that now. It looks Perfect very nice. Fit. It looks, it when looks this, good. When this was cut, because that was just too much. Right. And it wasn't summery. Looking. It wasn't summery. Grandma looked at it and goes, you need more skin. Which, <laughs> you know, Grandma is going to be 98 this month. So that's very saucy. Yes. She <laughs> need, it, 
was just way over here. It was. It looked weird. It, it, it looked, looked weird. like it looked weird. And, and now it's going to be very summery. Very summery. And very August, cute. August, you're going to wish you had cut a little more. Probably, <laughs> probably, because it's hot down here. No, but so, but there, there's the the idea. If she you fit it. as you sew, then you don't get to the end of the project and have it completely finished okay, and realize. Had, yeah, had she put the binding as it was, way over here, she never would have worn the blouse because it wouldn't have fit. Or I would have had to rip it all out and then go back in and cut the arms eye out. Yeah. Right. Now, now it's summary. Right. So thankfully, I tried this on last night before I put on the armhole binding and realized that. And since we were making this video today and grandma was coming over, I said that's the perfect time to show how beneficial it is to fit as you sew. And if you have someone to help you out, um, especially someone as experienced as grandma, then it's, it makes it even better. Look how cute it's going to be. It's going to be very cute. Yeah. It's going to be super cute. Yeah. So I'm happy with the way this top is turning out. Thanks to grandma's help. And, um, you know, it's, it's a it's really nothing, but just making the pattern for you when they make patterns, they make patterns generally. That's for the general public, but you're not the general public. You are an individual and every, you have needs that they can't please everyone. So they can, they give you a basic pattern and then you fit it. That's and that's another way. reason why there's a five eighths inch seam allowance. So exactly. you can adjust accordingly to exactly. fit you better. And that's, that's one reason the commercial pattern companies have such big seam allowance. Now this is an indie pattern from a book. So it's only a half inch seam allowance, but there's enough volume in this top that I can still take out some of this, you know, arm side here and make it fit better without really jeopardizing the overall. And now, and now all she's going to do is put a little tape around there. And, and then it's it. done. And then I just have to hem it. And, and now she's going to have a really cute summer little summer top. top. Yeah. yeah. Well, those are five tips I learned from sewing with grandma. And when did you start? When did we start? Well, really we started sewing, you were sewing and I'd be sitting at your feet back in the yes. day. How old was I back then? Oh, about four. Okay. So four. And I was just, I was in the sewing area. And of course I would take you to the fabric stores. I think you. grandma started my fabric obsession, right? Probably. Well, it's in your genes. <laughs> I mean, it is. We have, beautiful seamstresses on, I don't know about her father's side, but on my mother's side and, and her, my husband's family were great seamstresses. Right, so, so it's, it's in my genes. Yeah, so great ants for you of just pouring in with good, good genes to sew. I mean, these people really, I do not, I just sew. I'm not an expert seamstress, I sew as I tell everyone, just so the outside looks good and fits, I don't care what the inside Grandma's looks like. being too modest. Her insides <laughs> look very nice too. And these five tips will really help you no, up won't. your sewing game. And if you haven't, weren't fortunate to learn from your grandma, or maybe your grandma didn't sew like my grandma does, you take these five tips to heart, they will certainly help you in all your sewing endeavors from here to come. And if you've enjoyed this video, you totally want to check out this one. Grandma and I are sewing sleeves together. It will help you figure it out and you are going to really enjoy it. We had a great time making that one too. And until next time, happy sewing.